Are you always wondering about the things around you? Do you always have the need to find out? Then, this is the show for you. Learn what makes things tick. Or how they simply came to be. Satisfy your curiosity. Welcome to another episode of Curious. Music. There's more to music than just the sounds we hear. Really, when we think about it, when do sounds become generally pleasing to our ears? What's the line between sound and music? While it might seem subjective, generally, there are some patterns or forms that music tend to follow. But first, what is music? Well, music is an art form where the medium is sound and silence. Generally, most music have common elements associated with it. Let's take a look. Pitch. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound. It governs the melody or the sequence of pitches that make up a song. And harmony or the set of notes that sound good together. And there is rhythm or how the sound flows. This is also followed by tempo or the fastness or slowness of music and meter which is the length of a piece measured in time. Lastly, there's timbre. This means the quality or the color of sound. To differentiate timbre, you can check out a guitar and piano playing the same note. Because of the timbre of the guitar and piano, each note, although same in pitch, sounds distinct. Music can be made using our human voice or with percussive slaps, like when we clap. Sometimes, instruments are used and utilized. These range from acoustic and physical instruments to the more digital instruments like the synthesizers that we have today. Music has been around since ancient times and has served many purposes like worship, ceremonies, performance art, and as a form of entertainment. Music is oftentimes divided into genres or styles of play. These make up the different ways of how music is made and played all over the world. And oftentimes, styles would merge, overlap, or even develop something new. Arguably, from being a shared and performed art, the development of recording and broadcast technology gave music a wider audience. Radio and vinyl technology paved the way for the music industry, a tradition that is carried on today and is being continuously shaped by digital and computer media. Seeds. The planet Earth is not just home to the animal species, but to plant life as well. Plants are living organisms, responsible for providing food and the oxygen that we breathe. Unlike the animal kingdom, however, plants utilize a different type of reproduction method. One of the most common is through the production of seeds. But what are seeds? Well, seeds are small embryonic plants, which is enclosed in a covering or seed coat. Seeds are formed when a plant's ovule is fertilized. Fertilization may occur naturally through wind, gravity, or with the help of plant-hopping animals like insects, carrying the pollen from one plant to the next. This process is called pollination. 
then fertilization occurs. During this process, the plant's egg cell from the receiving plant and the sperm cell from the pollen of another plant fuse and turn into a zygote, or the embryo. The embryo cells multiply and form the tissues of the seed. The seed is then kept inactive until conditions are right for it to grow. Sometimes, seeds can last hundreds of years of inactivity before they are even planted or grown. In most plants, the seeds are kept in the middle of the fruits or the flower. The seeds are then passed by natural means like falling with the wind and gravity or with the help of animals who consume the fruits who then scatter or disperse the seeds, or when they are planted or sown. When the seed reaches the soil and gets moisture, it starts to shed its coat. Then it will grow roots, a stem, and leaves. And eventually, the seedling will grow into a plant. Once the plant is fully grown, the cycle of pollination and fertilization occurs once more until the plant grows its own fruit and produces seeds. This ensures that the plant species lives on. As a precaution though, seed banks are set up in different parts of the world to prepare for catastrophic events that may wipe out a plant species. Seed banks are actually large vaults that are stocked with various seeds in an environment that can protect them from calamities and disaster. Seed banks are also useful for people who want to study plant DNA and genetics. TV For more than half a century, the TV has been a staple in many houses, offices, and other establishments. It has been a medium of communication, delivering the news, ads, and your favorite TV shows. Let's take a look at how the TV came to be. The TV as we know it is a product of many different inventions, which contributed to its form. In 1884, German inventor Paul Nepko invented a rotating disc that transmitted pictures through wired means. In 1924, John Baird invented the first motion pictures that were televised through a special picture tube. Also in the 1920s, Vladimir Zurykin invented the cathode ray tube. And finally, Philo Farnsworth invented the 60-line display that would make TV pictures clearer. The first consumer television soon came in the late 1930s. First, it came in black and white. And then, colored TVs came around in the 60s. Here's how a TV works. TVs utilize electromagnetic waves or radio waves to show motion pictures and sound. This is done when the TV or cable networks convert and transmit the video into signals that can be received by the TV. When the TV receives the signal, it then converts it back into instructions that the TV can understand and convert into a picture much like how a printer prints documents line by line. Only in the case of the TV, this happens really fast at around 30 to 60 frames per second, which gives us the illusion of moving pictures. Over the years, the TV have utilized various technologies to display images. But the core principle remains the same. CRT or cathode ray tubes. The first TVs used CRT technology to translate electromagnetic waves into moving pictures. When the signal is received, the CRT hits three layers of color TV cells line by line and assigns a color to each cell. These cells eventually form the images that we see. Liquid Crystal Display, or LCD. 
TV signals are translated by a light source that is filtered by polarizing liquid crystal. These form the pixels with color that produce an image. Christmas Day It is said that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas is a holiday celebrated every 25th of December. For many people around the world, it is a time celebrated with friends and family, with food and gift giving. It is one of those holidays that are recognized all over the world. But there is a deeper meaning behind Christmas. For people in the Christian faith, Christmas marks the birth of the Christian Messiah, Jesus Christ. Although the holiday's origins are not as clear. Christmas was not even celebrated by early Christians in the 1st to 2nd century AD. Nobody's even sure if December 25th is the correct date of Jesus' birth as there are no mentions in the Bible. Perhaps one of the possible explanations for choosing the date was of convenience. During the rise and spread of Christianity, pagan holidays and feasts were integrated, if not replaced, with Christian feast days. December 25th happens to fall during the winter solstice and is the pagan feast day of Saturnalia. Christmas as we know it has come a long way from its humble roots. The Christmas tree tradition was actually started in the 1800s by the English royal family when they posed with a decorated tree which was published in magazines. The practice caught on and the tree became part of tradition. Another Christmas tradition is gift giving also symbolic of the three wise men giving gifts to the newborn Jesus in the Nativity story. Because of the rise of industrialized production methods and numerous advertising campaigns, the Christmas gift-giving tradition has become an industry in itself. And of course, who could forget Santa Claus, the famous Christmas character based on Saint Nicholas of Myra, also known as Sinterklaas. He was a saint known for giving gifts. Santa's iconic long beard and red wardrobe was actually inspired by a Coca-Cola campaign depicting him wearing red, which is why it is associated with Santa and Christmas in general. How about Santa's flying reindeer? Well, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Dunder, were the names from a 1983 poem while Rudolph, on the other hand, was added around the 1930s. He originated in a Christmas storybook produced in 1939. Money It is said that money makes the world go around. Money is the instrument that we use to pay for goods and services. It may seem quite obvious now, but money serves a lot of functions in the economy. Money is used as a medium of exchange. It is also used as a measure of value, and also as a method of deferred payment, such as with settling debts. And lastly, it is a store of value. But how did money come to be? Money usage is a relatively recent invention. Before money, people used the barter system, or trade of goods, that's around 100,000 years ago. The first types of money were a type of commodity money, which means that a value was assigned to a particular object. Mesopotamians used the shekel, which was a weight equivalent to 160 grams of barley, while the Aboriginal Australians used shells as money. Gold and silver eventually became a popular commodity money because they were considered rare and valuable. Gold and silver pieces were then minted as coins to be used as money. Then money evolved with a banking system 
which gave us a representative money in the form of banknotes. These notes would represent the value of the money stored in a bank. This held an advantage because carrying large amounts of commodity money, whether if it's gold or shells, became pretty impractical. Just think about it. Banknotes were first seen in the 7th century BC, Song Dynasty in China. Then eventually Europe would follow suit and use banknotes as well at around the 1600s. These notes would become the basis for the paper money of today. During the 17th to 19th century, the gold standard system slowly replaced banknotes. Money values were now pegged to the value and amount of gold owned by nations. After World War II, however, most countries would adopt the Bretton Woods Conference, which fixed a currency alongside the U.S. dollar, which was then fixed to the value of gold. This would then lead to what we know now as fiat money, or face value money. On the onset, coins were no longer made of precious metals and the paper money circulated has no inherent value aside from the one assigned to it by a central bank. Portland Cement Portland Cement, or more commonly known as cement, is one of the discoveries that has helped pave the way for today's urban landscape. You may not know it, but most of the buildings from this century are made with concrete, a product of cement. But what exactly is cement? Technically speaking, a cement is a binder material that hardens. It is mostly used in construction. There are different types of cement, but the most common of course is Portland cement. The thing we use for making houses and buildings. Portland cement is made from a mixture of raw materials like limestone slate, shale, silica iron, and clay. These materials are gathered by digging or quarrying into the earth. Once the materials are gathered, they are processed. First, they are crushed into a very fine powdery state with the use of large grinders. Next, the powder mix is heated to extreme temperatures about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. This results to the formation of what is known as the clinker, glassy red hot cinders. The clinker then goes on to be processed into a very fine dust-like powder and is mixed with other compounds like gypsum. This is now your cement. Different ratios of cement along with other materials are used for different applications. Sometimes, other materials such as gravel and sand are also mixed in as well. Concrete This is the most common use for cement. It is usually made up of a mixture of cement, sand, and aggregates like gravel. Mortar Mortar is used as a cement adhesive when working with other materials such as bricks. Screed Screed is a layer of cement that is placed over a floor to make tiles stick to it. Plaster This is a cement with thinner, lighter consistency. Cement works through a process called hydration. When the correct proportion of water and cement is mixed, a paste-like consistency forms. This liquid substance can be used as filler for molds or for surfaces. The cement eventually hardens and forms concrete. This happens because the molecules of the cement react with water. As the water is introduced, nodes or the bonds between the particles of the cement increase in size and holds the particles together. Just as the cement cures. Electricity Most of the stuff we use today only work because it is powered by electricity. 
our TVs, phones, the lights we use, the fridge that we keep our food in is powered by electricity. And though it may seem that electricity comes out of wall sockets and batteries, there is really more to it than meets the eye, literally. To understand electricity, we must go deep to the particles that make up matter. Everything is made up of atoms. Remember that atoms have three main parts. The protons, the particle in the center that has a positive charge. Neutrons, the particle that has no charge. And together with the proton, make up the nucleus. And the electrons, negatively charged particles that are always in motion. Electricity is defined as the flow of moving electrons, or an electrical current. The particles, both negative and positive, influence the movement of electrons, and are governed by three simple rules. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract, and charged objects will always attract uncharged objects. Electrons flow because they are attracted to an opposite charge. This movement then makes electrical energy, which can be harnessed to power our stuff. To harness electricity, there must always be 1. A path, 2. A power source, and 3. A load. For the path, conductive material or the stuff that makes up wires and the terminals are used. The most common material, of course, is copper. The path, along with the source and the load, will make up what's called an electrical circuit. For the power source, there are several that we can use. Hydroelectric, which produces electricity from falling water. Geothermal, where electricity is produced from steam rising from the earth. Chemical, as in batteries, where a chemical reaction produces electrical current and solar, where light energy is stored and converted to electricity. And lastly, the load, or basically, where the electricity will be used for. Like your phone, the house lights, your AC, and basically all your other stuff. informative episode from Curious. As always, if you have the questions, then we're here with the answers. Stay inquisitive and stay informed. Catch us again next time on Curious. <laughs>